If we take a look at the official documentation for Kubernetes, you can see there is a section called Hello Mini Cube, and it has a tutorial that walks you through how to set it up in an environment. One of the better environments to explore Kubernetes and containers is GitHub Codespaces. So I have a repo here, Nogi, BJJ, Coursera, Apply, DE, Kubernetes Lab. And if we select this code icon here, you can see that if I wanted to, I could create a new code space. But since I've already got one enabled right here, I can actually go ahead and switch over to that code space. And this allows me to run both Kubernetes uh, via Minikube and also compile Docker containers. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this would work. So if I go over to this environment here, you can see there's a series of steps. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to either push a container in the case of my own deployment, or I'm going to use a pre-existing container. Since I'm gonna go through the official tutorial here, I'm gonna go ahead and select Minikube Start, and this will start the Minikube uh, system locally in this environment. And again, what's so great about GitHub Codespaces is I don't have to worry about uh, creating runaway processes on my machine. It's in a hosted cloud-based environment, and it's actually mapped directly into the the repo that I'm working on. So it's a very good one-to-one -one relationship. And, and actually, while this is launching and running, another thing I could do is I could create a new terminal and I could also monitor what's happening by running HTOP. And this is always a good way to see what's happening on your machine. And you can see, in fact, that uh, it's preparing Kubernetes. And if I run this, we can see, there we go, look at all those resources that, that are actually being uh, run. Now, this is a very powerful machine. It's a 16-core ma machine here, and it has uh, lots of RAM. Uh, but in this particular scenario, uh, we've been able to get this thing started. Now that Minikube is started, we can also enable the metric server here. So if I type in this command or just paste it in here, we can also start this metric server. So the next step would be to uh, go ahead and create a dashboard URL so we can take a look at what's happening. All right, now that we've got this dashboard here, what we can do is, is also uh, open this up inside of GitHub. And if I follow this link, you'll see that it's able to show us a very comprehensive dashboard here uh, that's, that's pretty neat that shows us what's going on in terms of our Kubernetes cluster that's running locally here. So we have workload status. We can see there's a deployment, a pods, a replica stat. And from here, we could just uh, go, th go through and, and play around with uh, the different things that are running. You can see that there's a pod right here called uh, Hello Fast API, something I had set up earlier. And we can also look at different services as well. And what's useful about this is that I, I can basically control my entire system by looking at this dashboard. Now, what else can we do here? Well, uh, the other thing to do would be to uh, go ahead and create a deployment for our service. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to create a new deployment here. And this is using a default container that lives in this registry called registry.k8s.io. Uh, and if we go ahead and paste this in, there we go. The deployment is created. Now, I could look at the deployment one of two ways. Uh, I could actually go through here and look at the dashboard if I wanted to uh, by by looking at the, the deployment, and we should be able to find it there. <clears throat> and there we go. We see it's hello node right there. Or I also could do it from the terminal. So if we go through here and we run this, we can see that kubectl get deployments. You can see I have two uh, deployments that are running. I also can go ahead and do the same thing from the, the terminal as well, say get pods, and we see the pods that are running. And then if I want to expose the service, so I basically use it, uh, I can also go through here and paste this in. Now that the service is exposed, I can also view it from this kubectl uh, terminal right here. And there you see where it is. And then I can also um, go ahead and look at what is the actual service that I would actually want to connect to. And so in this particular uh, location here, uh, one of the things that we can do is grab in 
exactly this IP address here and, and go ahead and pull it up. Now there's another command that, that we can do that's, that's kind of a nice little command uh, to do. Uh, and it's basically this minikube service URL. And so I'm gonna go ahead and, and type this in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, mini, minikube service, and we're gonna call it the service name that we created earlier. And this will show me the URL that if I wanted to preview it, I could communicate with. So again, because I'm in GitHub here, I could just hover and wait till the follow link shows up, go ahead and select that. And it says, do you wanna to open to an external website? Let's go ahead and do that. And we'll be able to see our running service. Finally, another thing we can do is we can also just curl this and get access to the service. There we go. We see that the service is active and it returns back a timestamp. Now to clean things up here, what we could do is, is run these commands to get everything stopped. So we can say, hello, cube, CTL delete service. Let's go ahead and run that. Let's go ahead and stop the deployment. Let's go ahead and run that. And then if we wanted to, we could also stop Minikube as well.